today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite techniques in line and wash. Splatters. Yes. If you've just seen one or two of my other videos, you will know that I absolutely love splatters. You know that, that little drizzle of paint uh, covering your page in uh, strategic areas, making your sketch look super artsy and a lot more finished than it was just when it was just a second ago. So splatters is wonderful and magical. Almost like fairy dust on the page. Incredible. But it's not that simple to make splatters. So I, I wanted to make a video just to share with you um, different ways of working with it and how I do it. And then a pro tip at the end, just for, uh, for you who are watching the entire video. Uh, because I actually just, I don't just splatter with paint. Aha, spoiler. Ah, uh, no, no. <laughs> Not a spoiler, a teaser. Uh, I want to show you different ways that uh, brushes work when they are different shapes. So we're going to do that in just a second. But first I want to show you how to share with you how to actually tap the brush. Because when you have a brush and you want to uh, make the splatters on pa paper, not on your husband's computer, just saying, first you dip it in water like that and you kind of just leave a little bit out here you don't want it to be completely full especially if it's a natural hairbrush like this and then you can tap it in two ways you can tap it with your hand like this or you can tap it with another brush so holding it and uh, just tapping it like that and uh, this will create a more controlled tap than it would with your hand. Um, but you figure out what is, works best for you. Try both and see how it works. And uh, now I think I'm just going to point the camera to the paper and we can see how the different sizes work with splatters. Now we have the paper set up here and I have my brushes laying here. First, I want to show you the round brush. This is the one that I use the most. It's a synthetic brush, which is important. And uh, I'm just going to fill it up with water and uh, load it with a bit of color here. And then I'm going to tap it. And remember, you can tap it with your hand or with your brush, whatever works. And this will create a very nice splatter that is kind of controlled so if you just tap it down like that it will create a very controlled splatter if you were to splatter it in a direction you can try that it would do something different It'd be a little less controlled but still kind of keeping that random spot now I want to take my natural hairbrush because this holds a lot more water and a lot more paint. So, and it's bigger. So let's see what that does. You can see how that creates bigger splatters. And uh, remember this takes longer to dry, of course. Um, but it can also be a little bit harder to control when it's this big. But of course it depends on the the um, however you want it to look but you can see these are still very controlled and very similar and um, you might be what they're not looking at all the same because it's all different sizes and stuff but you can see they're almost all round and I want to start to, to kind of challenge us a little bit because now I'm taking a rigger brush so you can see how this has a really funny shape and uh, I'll be loading that with actually I'm gonna load it with something different so you can better see it so let's see I can use a this one I think it's the paints gray so just tapping it like I did with the rest and you can see how they actually come in a direction this time just do it again, a little bit more water. 
And this is not because I, I uh, angled it like this. I'm tapping it completely um, straight down, but still gives me an angle. That's just because it has this, this uh, funny shape. And this is great if you want some direction to your splatters. And look how much movement it creates um, when you get that almost like explosion of splatters. Then we have a flat brush. Let's see what that does. We can take another color here. And this is just fun to experiment with. So just doing it here, see what that... That is actually a very fine mist almost of, um, of paint. I'm just using a bit more here. But this creates a very controlled look as well, just like these, but with a um, almost like a mist. And all brushes will act different. So I recommend you going home and uh, or going home. You're probably sitting there at home right now, but trying to look at your brushes and see what do you have and what can you play around with. Finally, I have a fan brush just to see what that does. And uh, I'll load it with a blue. It can be actually a little bit hard to load a fan brush, but see. And uh, just tapping it here, see how that creates a, also a kind of very controlled um, small area where you have the splatters. So very controlled compared to these over here that was just kind of all over. This one has a, has a direction. Then these two actually has a very controlled look and I think that's because the the bristles are closer or, or whatever and I'm, I'm not sure why actually but um, you figure it out by experimenting and seeing what your brushes will do and uh, how you can use them. I really like to use these the round brushes but for a, an explosion I think these are really fun and I actually think I'm gonna try these a little bit more but I do like to have mine very artsy looking, so it's almost like an accident. And these are a little bit too controlled um, for my taste. But if I wanted something very intense, then I would definitely go with this. And then I promised you a small tip, a pro tip that I always use. These are still wet. And I actually always go with first a splatter of paint, like this and then a splatter of clean water. So just rinsing my brush again. And um, let's just start here. You can tap that here and you can see how, how this really makes the paint flow into the clean water. So I will spritz or sp splatter clean water to kind of make it flow a little bit more. So you can see how this becomes suddenly a lot more artsy looking, also a bit more wet, but compared to this over here. But I really like how this can create a lot more movement in your splatters than just these very controlled ones. So doing this a little bit will just enhance your painting even more. Isn't splatters fun? I'm seriously, this is an addiction. And a great one. I love splatters and I know it can take a little bit overhand uh, but I love it and just a small tip for you don't do it next to your husband's computer because he is not going to like it because they are spreading everywhere but don't let it stop you then go to the floor or wherever put up a I don't know something to cover yourself up and do all the splatters because it's so fun and uh, you really don't want to miss out on that. And if you want to dive even deeper into ink and wash, then I have a beginner course where we are going over all the ways of sketching and painting and creating wonderful ink and wash flowers and yeah, a lot of flowers. Um, but also just all the techniques and how to keep it simple and how to create life and movement and everything you want in ink and wash sketches. So. I'll put a link for that here uh, below so you can check that out. 
Also, there's a few freebies if you want to check those out as well. And then I want to say thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to uh, make sure to see new videos from me. And I promise you there will be more. <laughs> and uh, just have a wonderful day. Bye.